And now, who's starting to have three-year-old Rochester Ladies Heroes? Batting first and playing second base, number seven, Emma Sells. Yeah. Batting second and catching this afternoon for the Ladies Heroes, number 12, Kelly Watson. Batting yeah. second and catching this afternoon for the Ladies Heroes, number 12, Kelly Watson. Batting third and playing shortstop, number three, Emma Hottishell. Yeah, playing third and batting cleanup, number one, Kylie Coleman. Yeah, In center field, batting fifth, number 23, Sid Hawes. Yeah, In the circle this afternoon for the Lady Zebras, and batting sixth, number 27, Mia yeah, Hottishell. Yeah, yeah. Batting seventh, playing right field, number 11, Keaton Gorn. Yeah, yeah. Batting eighth, the designated player, number 17, Haley Durkis. The flex player will be playing first base, Natty Heinzman. And 99 for the Raptors Lady Zebras and playing left field, number 10, Gara Strasser. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, you will please stand. Gentlemen, remove your caps for the playing of our national anthem. Good evening, everybody, and welcome here to Fansler Field and tonight's TRC matchup with the Manchester Squires visiting your Rochester Zebras. You can see the Squires coming in three and nine, one and two in conference play. The Zebras five and five, two and two, coming off of a win on Monday versus Northfield here at Fansler Val. Uh, you know, starting to put some things together. Mia Hattishell looked really good in the circle on uh, Monday. Pitching has picked up in the past couple games. Look, yeah, Mia, Mia especially has been really good these past couple games. We always saw that, you know, she can spin the ball, and now it's starting to go where she wants it to go. Yeah. And you're really seeing some results. And that's interesting because they're playing a Manchester team that's starting to hit the ball a lot better. We said Manchester's 3-9. and nine. They were 1-9 and nine until a couple of games ago, but they beat Triton 11-1 to one in five innings, and they just beat Wabash 12 to nothing in five innings. Yeah. So they have really been hitting the ball these past two games. They still only scored 56 runs in 12 games, but 23 of them in their last two games. This is a team that's starting to hit the ball. they got a veteran coach in Todd Volk. We remember him at Tippecanoe Valley. I think he was at, I think this is a second stint in Manchester. I think he was also at Whitco for a time. So um, it'll be interesting to see the improving Lady Zebra pitching taking on a Manchester team that's hitting the ball. The other interesting story of the day is that Molly Shanip, who is Manchester's number one pitcher, is not in the circle today. Emma Evans, their number two pitcher, is in there. Shanip is a really talented freshman. She pitched really well against Triton Wabash, but not in the circle today. I guess just getting a day off. But with Evans in, let's see how well the Lady Zebras do with the bat. Starting lineups for Manchester. Uh, Peyton Baker is leading off and playing shortstop. She'll be followed by Molly Shanup, the left fielder, and Avery Howard, the second baseman. Middle three of Emma Evans, the pitcher, Maddie Parson, the catcher, and uh, Lauren Barrett, the uh, senior third baseman. Olivia Neal will bat seventh and play right field. Carson Campus is the DP. She will hit eighth, and Hadley Shanup is the center fielder. She'll hit ninth. The flex player is first baseman, McKelvey Espeset. Con is 0-1-1. From Mia Houdeshell, that ball is hit well to center, but tracking it and catching it is Sidney Hawes in center field. Well, that's a good start for the Lady Zebras. Two pitches, and uh, they have one down here in the top of the yeah. first. There's a good look at the freshman pitcher, Mia Houdeshell, and uh, in the foreground is her sister, Emma, so that's a nice shot there. Mm -hmm. This is Molly Shanup hitting 265 on the year. No homers and five RBIs. She has nine hits and 34 at bats. Molly. 
Again, Rochester hosts Warsaw on Saturday, and they host Wabash here on Monday. So that's three consecutive home games, all with teams, all against teams with a losing record. So chance to maybe beef up on that record a little bit. Let's see if the Zebras, Lady Zs, can get on a roll here. As that one's a little bit low. Manchester as a team is hitting 301. That's their team batting average. Rochester's team batting average is 427. Again, it's those pitching issues. Rochester's team ERA is 8.02. Strike. Mia's ERA is 9.21. She's walked 27 in 19 innings. And she just walked Molly Shanup. Shanup walks. That'll bring up the pitcher, Howard. Avery Howard's the batter. She is the second baseman. Howard hitting 387. 12 for 31. She has seven RBIs. Four of her 12 hits have gone for extra bases. Three doubles and a triple. 0 and 1. Tries to bunt and fouls it off. Just a reminder, fans, as foul balls go, please return them back to the nearest dugout. And these teams are sectional rivals. But if they were to play in the sectional, it wouldn't be until the sectional final. Swing and a miss. Throw to second. Safe. Is there... There was obstruction, but she was safe anyway. Or, uh... I get obstruction and interference mixed up all the time. Howard strikes out for the second. Out. Shut up, steals second. Let bring up the batter, Evans. Let her bring up the pitcher, Eb Emma Evans. Swing and a miss. Emma Evans is hitting 643 on the year. So she has been hot. She is 9 for 14. She is a senior, and she is their pitcher today. 0-1-1. Good pitch. Had a little drop to it, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Had a little late movement. Yeah, yeah. and there, she had trouble picking up the changeup earlier, and that's a good sign that her arm motion is being nice and deceptive. Soft liner caught by Coleman, and that retires the side. Evans lines out to the third baseman. Three out. The no half. runs, no hits, no errors, one left. At the end of half an inning, no score between Rochester and Manchester, and you're watching RTC TV4. Welcome back here to Fansler as we move into the bottom of the first. And uh, good job there in the top, Val, by uh, Mia Hadeshell. She pitched around a, a, a walk, but uh, able to... Uh, Get a strikeout and, and a nice uh, nice inning there for the Zebras. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, she did a great. I mean, not really a lot, not a lot of hard contact in that inning either. And again, we talked about the ability to self correct for high school pitchers, whether they're high school softball pitchers or baseball pitchers. The the ability to go, okay, uh, I missed on that last pitch, but here's what I can do to fix it right, right away. And I think she did. For Rochester, here is their lineup. Emma Sells will lead off and play second base. Callie Watson will hit second and do the catching. Emma Houdeschel is the junior shortstop. She'll hit third. Batting fourth is junior third baseman Kylie Coleman. Batting fifth is junior center fielder Sidney Hawes. Batting sixth is the freshman pitcher Mia Houdeschel. Keaton Doran will bat seventh and play right field. Haley Durkis will bat eighth. She's the DP. And Dara Strasser will hit ninth and she will play left field. The flex player is first baseman Maddie Heinzman. So Maddie is back. She's been back for a couple couple weeks now, but she has not played. She has not hit yet. Uh, for the Zebras, the even-numbered years, uh, kind of slim pickings. No seniors, only one sophomore. A lot of juniors and uh, a lot of freshmen for this Rochester team. Mm -hmm. Emma Sells will lead it off. First pitch from Evans is outside. Sells is hitting 370 on the year. She is 10 for 27. No extra base hit. She's just a slap hit. She's a slap hitter, but she's she's Emma, and she's got five RBIs on the air. You be you, Emma. We don't need you hitting for power. Speaking of the lone sophomore on the team, there is the sophomore Emma mm -hmm. Sells. Emma's only struck out four times in twenty-seven at bats. That's a good ratio. 
Youngstown is now 2-1. and one. Again, Molly Shanup has done a lot of their pitching this year, but this is Emma Evans in the circle today. Fall off. 2-2. Two and two. Grounder, shortstop, throw to first in time. Nice throw by Peyton Baker. And that'll bring up Callie Watson. Callie hitting 423 on the year. No homers, 9 RBI. She does have a dub one double and one triple. 11 for 26. First pitch. Put in play. Fair ball. Ground ball to third, and the throw is in time. Watson grounds out for the second out. It'll bring up the third batter in the lineup. The shortstop, Hottishell. I'm to bring up shortstop Emma Hottishell. Remember the last time we talked about Emma and we talked about how she's gotten cold? She was only hitting 800. Yeah. Yeah. Her sure, slump has continued, Steve. She's only hitting 773. Oh, no. First pitch strike. She is 17 for 22. That's a 773 batting average. I I don't know what uh, what Coach Lee is going to do with her. Yeah. I mean, what do you, what do you do with that? And she leads the team in extra base hits with eight, four doubles, three triples, and a, a homer. Do I think does she have two homers? No, one. Yeah, 17 for 22, and she also leads the team in RBIs with 14. Hawes and Coleman have 13 RBIs each. So I guess you. Uh, in basketball, we call that balanced scoring. Call mm -hmm. Softball, balanced RBIs. Pitch is high. Two and one. Emma also leads the team in runs scored with 16. Put in play. Nice stop by Baker. The throw. Safe. Infield single. Base hit for That'll bring up. Hitter, you really got to feel cleanly to get Emma. I mean, she's got some wheels no matter what, and mm -hmm. that little bobble was enough to make sure that she got on base. Yep. That will bring up the junior third baseman, Kylie Coleman. Kylie's hitting 409, no homers, 13 RBIs. Pitch is high. There goes Emma, and the throw is going to be late. Stolen base. Stolen base for Hodgson. She's batting 409. Does that mean she's cleaning up the plate? Steve. Oh, come on. That went right. Yeah. Steve, I have a master's degree in journalism. <laughs> that's where you learn these puns. This is you know, this is that's, that's amateur hour, yeah, right? Come yeah. On, Steve. Come on, man. <laughs> one and one to count to Coleman. I saw a picture of the Indiana Crush 10U team. It was taken about six, seven years ago. I saw young Kylie Coleman. Oh, adorable. Your heart would just melt. <laughs> Kylie Coleman was in that picture. Molly Moriarty and Corinna Stiles from Valley were in that picture. Kenzie Bradley was in that picture. She played softball once upon a time. Ground ball to third. The throw is in time, and that retires the side. Coleman grounds out for the third out. No runs, one left. For Rochester in the bottom of the first. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left at the end of one. No score between Rochester and Manchester, and you're watching RTC. TV. Welcome back here to Fansler Field as we move into the top of the second here between the Manchester Squires and your Rochester Zebras tonight. The Albo team's got a base runner. Couldn't get him past second base there in the first inning, so uh, some uh, good defense there, some pretty good pitching. and uh, Yeah. You know, Evan's getting some ground balls. You know, one thing I remember talking about with um, Becky after the Valley game is how much they've really worked on kind of that opposite field hitting because it was something we had talked about in the booth during that game. It seemed like they're they've got kind of those right-handed hitters kind of have that opposite field stroke. Mm -hmm. And she said, "Thank you for noticing because we really work hard on that in practice." But everybody in the bottom of the first pulled the ball on the ground. So yeah, let's see if there'll be an adjustment moving forward. First pitch from How to Shell. Ground ball. Oh, nice stab by Coleman. 
And throws to first for the out. Excellent play as Coleman robs Matty Parson. Parson grounds out to the third base. One away. Brings up the third baseman, Barrett. Lauren Barrett, the third baseman, is the batter. Barrett, a 276 hitter. Manchester's hit four home runs as a team. Parson, who just batted, is at two of the four. And Barrett is at one of the four. Swings at the first pitch, popped up, second base. Emma Sells has got it. Two pitches, two outs. Barrett pops out. I don't know how you can get any more efficient than that. Yeah, and really got in on her hands nicely there. That will bring up the right fielder, Olivia Neal. Neal is a junior. She is a 174 batter. And she hit, she's hit the other home run. Foul ball, that got a piece of Callie, and that got a piece of the umpire, too. Sharon Love there on that foul ball. Yeah, that was a, what do they call that, the poo-poo platter? <laughs> Owen won the count. See, that is that is master degree right there. I mean, <laughs> I, I, He's officiated many of our basketball games, too, hasn't he? Not Mr. I'm drawing a blank. I should know his name. Chad Myers. Chad Myers, yeah. Although. One and two. Foul ball. During the baseball season, we did uh, famous birthdays in Chicago Cubs history for Mr. Screeton. That really. Ground ball to short. How to Shell's throw to first is in time, and it's a 1 2 3 inning for Mia How to Shell. No runs, no hits, no, no runs, errors, no nobody left. The end of an inning and a half. No score between Rochester and Manchester. And you're watching RTC TV. Back here at Fansler Field, no score through an inning and a half. Rochester coming to the plate here in the bottom of the second. These two teams are also facing off over at Bob Copeland Field in a conference baseball matchup. Of course, the Zebras baseball team, Val, 4-0 in the conference, looking to stay perfect tonight with a win. Right, Rochester and Wabash are the only remaining undefeated teams in conference play. Yeah. Wabash is hosting a pretty much improved McConaughey team tonight over at Chris Rood Field. Ground ball foul. The other matchups, Whitco is at Tippecanoe Valley, North Miami is at Southwood, and Northfield is at Peru. The Whitco Valley baseball game has already been postponed to tomorrow due to wet grounds at Valley. Their field is really wet from what we heard. But yeah. The softball game is still on. Of course, uh, Valley, right, knocked uh, North Miami out of the unbeaten they conference did. mark. The they night. did. Only one undefeated team left in the conference in softball, and it's North Miami. They're 4-0. Base hit right center field. Nice job by Hawes. Hawes with a single. That'll bring up the pitcher, Mia Hodeschel. That'll bring up Mia Hodeschel. Mia, a freshman, is hitting 273 on the year. She is 6 for 22. Two of her six hits have gone for extra bases, both doubles. Four RBIs for Mia. So North Miami is 4-0, so they control their own destiny now. Bunt. Evans throws to first, out, and there goes Hawes trying for third. Safe. Mia Hadeschel out at first on the fielder's choice. Hawes advances all the way to third. Wow, that was aggressive base running there by Sid, making it all the way over to third, so... A little bit of a threat here by the Zebras in the bottom of the second. Runner at third with one out. So now a deep fly ball here can get a run in. Let's see how Coach Volk plays the plays the infield. It looked like the ball beat her there, but it's, it was hard to see. I don't think that she tagged her. Yeah. And Sid got the foot in. Uh, that's something Becky Lee has got to love. I mean, she how many times did she do that in her career, go from first to third on a bunt, her her ex? They did that all the time. Yeah. 
Swing and a miss to Do- by Doran at the first pitch from Evans. Keaton Doran is a 316 hitter, 6419. Put in play. Throw to first is in time, but Haw scores. RBI ground out for Keaton Doran, and the ladies ease take a 1 0 lead. Nobody on two out. I think Doran has emerged in the bottom part of that lineup as a uh, very solid hitter for Rochester. I just really like what she's been able to do this year. Right, and you can, I think, trust her to put the ball in play when you need her to, and I think that's a sign of growing confidence, her and herself and the team and her. First pitch to the freshman, Haley Durkis, is in there for a strike. Durkis is the DP today. One for seven on the season. Comebacker, Evans to Espeset for the out, and that retires the side. Durkis grounds out for the third out, but not before the Zebras can put one on. The one run, the the one hit, no and errors, nobody one left. At the end of two innings, Rochester leads Manchester one to nothing, and you're watching RTC We're back at Bob Copeland Field. We are ready for the top of the third inning. Rochester leads Manchester one to nothing. It'll be Campus. Hadley Shanup and Baker do for Manchester in the top of the third. So two pretty fast moving innings so far. Ball is being put in play and put in play early and counts. Pop up down the line and is caught by Emma Hadeshell. Campus pops to short to start the top of the third. Pop up. One out here in the third inning. Coming up Hadley Shanup. Shanup, the batter. Shanup is a 333 hitter, 9 for 27. First pitch and it hit her. Shanup's hit by the pitch. But it'll bring us back up to the top of the lineup in Baker. Yeah, even if it hits you on the bounce, it's a hit by pitch. And that. Uh, you don't like the. Yeah. Bounce pass, it's a good thing in basketball. It's not necessarily a good thing in basketball or in softball. Okay, runner first one out. Peyton Baker lays down a button. Foul ball 0 and 1. Yeah. The lessons you learn covering high school softball and baseball that you couldn't learn otherwise, like that weird bunt play the other night against Northfield in baseball. Low, there goes the runner, the throw. Safe stolen base for Hadley Shanup. Shanup with a stolen base. Count is one and one on Peyton Baker. Baker the, flew the, out to center first time. You're talking about the pop-up bunt where the infield fly was not right. Fly ball to left center. That's going to be a tough play, and it'll drop for a base hit. Here comes the runner trying to score, and she's safe. RBI double for Peyton Baker, and this game is tied. RBI One way. And the Bring up Molly Shannon. Molly Shannon walked her first time up. That one split the gap. Strasser hit the cut. Throw was just a little bit up the line. Swing and a miss to Molly Shannon. And that one in the dirt. And there goes the runner, and she will advance. Wild pitch. Baker advances on a wild pitch. One and one. Swing and a miss. I think that was kind of the same pitch as the last one. I think she got the release point right. and Good late movement on that one.
One and two. Fly ball, that should be deep enough to score the run, and it'll drop anyway. That's a base hit. RBI single from RBI Molly Shanup. And Manchester takes their first lead at two to one. Second baseman, Howard. That was a tough play for Doran. Couldn't get there. Runner at first, one out. And Avery Howard fouls that one off. Baker came in hitting 550. Howard's one of their big guns, hitting 387. 0 oh 2 the count. Fly ball, medium depth, pause. Makes the catch. Gets it, gets it back in to Emma Hottishell. That's the second out of the inning. Emma Evans will step in. Batting for Manchester, Evans. Evans, uh, as we mentioned, a 643 hitter on the season. She lined the third or first time, kind of a soft liner that Kylie Coleman nabbed. Outside with the ball. Low. So North Miami, they're the only undefeated team left in the conference, and they're at Southwood tonight. High for ball. Ball three. Southwood suffered their first conference loss the other night. They got no hit by Peru. They lost three to nothing. Amanda Eaglin from Peru. I'm interested to see her as a pitcher. She pitched a no-hitter. Base on balls. The runners first, second, two away. For the catcher. Parson. First and second, two outs. The batter is Maddie Parson. Parson grounded to third or first time up. So. Hi. Coach Meeks' team in North Miami doing it with pitching and defense. They've allowed one run total in four conference games. One run in four conference games. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's Lauren Duncan for you. She has been great. Count us 2-0 to Parson. So I don't know if Mia's trying to throw a rise ball and Parson isn't biting, or Mia just missing her spots. Outside. She's in danger of loading the bases here with two outs, and Manchester's kind of getting the timing down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Second time around. 3-0. Base on balls. Parsons walks, load the bases. Two away, and that'll bring up Come on, guys! third baseman, Barrett. Bases loaded, two outs. Lauren Barrett is the batter. And Mia retired her in a pop to second base. Last inning. Callie Watson is out for a chat. She tells the infielders there are two out. Reminds them of that. Courtesy running for Manchester number eight, Butts. Number eight. Courtesy, running. Courtesy runner. So I was down at Kokomo this morning, Val, and was able to uh, get a, uh, a good test at uh, the baseball field there at Highland Park. So we are planning on going down tomorrow night to broadcast the Rochester game with the Eastern Comets. Mm -hmm. Eastern is undefeated and number two, is that right? Two or three? Number four. Four. Savannah Evans is in as the courtesy runner at first base. For Parson. So Savannah Evans is at first. Emma Evans is at second. Molly Shanup is at third. First pitch is low for a ball. Yeah. 
Popped up. Making a basket catch as Emma Hottishall to retire the side. Nice job. Manchester scores two runs. Two hits. No errors and three left. At the end of two and a half innings, Manchester leads Rochester 2-1, to one, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Sleepers might have dodged a little bullet there in the top, Val, with the bases loaded, uh, able to uh, get the pop out and retire the side. Uh, it looked like it might be uh, Manchester adding more than the two runs. Yeah. Yeah, Mia Hadishel's made some good pitches. I mean, when she gets the ball in the strike zone, she's you know, done pretty well. I mean... Yeah, the first two Obviously, innings, uh, yeah. really, really efficient. Uh, just uh, had some trouble there finding that strike zone. Yeah, the especially on Barrett. Yeah, she's thrown two good pitches to Barrett and two at-bats. It'll be Strasser, Sells, and Watson due for Rochester in the bottom of the third. 9-1-2 in the batting order. Some boys basketball news. Matt Roth is the new boys basketball coach at Fort Wayne Blackhawk. And we thoughts and prayers are with Coach Davidson, who is now the listed as the coach emeritus. And Matt Roth is the new boys basketball coach there. And, of course, Matt Roth played at IU, played with Corey Barnett. Great shooter. Played for Tom Crean. And now he's the boys basketball coach at Fort Wayne Blackhawk. One and one to Dara Strasser. Some golf news. They, they proposed and approved a new format for the golf state tournament. Instead of five regionals, there will be six regionals. Eighteen teams will make. That means eighteen teams will make state, not fifteen. But Evans throws. Got her. That is another great play by Manchester. You know, talk about how to shell with her speed. Uh, Dara Strasser yeah. is right up there as well, and she can get down there in a hurry. Yeah, nice play by Avery Howard, the second baseman, getting over. This year or next year? I believe that's next year covering golf. So six regionals, so 18 teams. But only uh, previously it was the top five individuals on non-advancing teams out of the regional and make state. And under the new format, we only the top two. Mm. So more teams, fewer individuals. Mm. So does that hurt the uh, – as uh, Sells pops that one up, it's caught Sells by Barrett. That uh, that seems like it's counterintuitive to uh, some of the smaller schools that may have one good golfer. Right. Yeah. So uh, when there were 15 teams, so 15 times 5, that's 75 plus 25 individuals, so 100. Now you have 18 times 5, that's 90 plus 6 times 2 individuals, so 90 plus 12 is 102, so about the same number, slightly more, 102 instead of 100, but is, uh, I don't know. But again, when you're Rochester and you travel to the regional and you see Carmel and Westfield there, and uh, it'll be smaller numbers of teams. A little pop up. Is that caught? Yes, terrific catch by Espeset. Kind of a little looping liner. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of three innings, Manchester leads Rochester 2 to 1, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Taking a quick look here at that uh, play by the first baseman, getting underneath that, making that third out. Back here, fans are moving into the fourth. Manchester leads 2-1 after three innings, Val, and uh, we'll see if uh, if Mia gets back to her form there. She did really well through the first two innings, had a little trouble finding that strike zone there in the third, but kind of uh, Leveled out a little bit there with that last batter. We'll see if she can get back to uh, where she was in the first two innings. Yeah, and you got seven, eight, nine coming up in the batting order. So let's see if she can put this, put them away quickly here. Neil Campus and Hadley Shannon are due. Some girls basketball news: Northwood girls basketball coach Mark Heater has stepped down, citing health concerns. And some uh, college news: uh, We've already known that Madeline Hutspeth from Oregon Davis. Had signed with Manchester University. Mm -hmm. And now Mercedes Rhodes is going to transfer to Manchester University after one year at Judson. Judson College, Judson University. Yeah, that's over so, in Illinois, right? Yeah, so she's transferring to Manchester. So they'll have a couple of former Lady Bobcats. Okay. Of course, uh, Maddie Vanderweel from Argus is on that team. 
First pitch is low to Neal, who grounded to short her first time up. And they're going to have another Maddie on the team. Yeah, Maddie Smith from Caston. Maddie's, Maddie Smith is going to play volleyball and basketball at Manchester U. Yeah. First team all Hoosier North in both sports. She just had such a great senior year in, in both sports. I just wish her mm -hmm. luck. You know, that what she did in, in basketball this year, yeah. I mean, every bit of what Caston was able to do was started yeah. with Maddie Smith. Should we say that during a Rochester game? Maddie was awesome in that Rochester game. She, you know, it's, it's the truth. I mean, yeah. we're not saying it to be mean. It's yeah. just the truth. Yeah. Base hit to left. Neal aboard to start the fourth. Neal with a single. I mean, she almost single-handedly won the Cass County Tournament. Uh, yeah. Just just came sh a little bit shy there of, uh, with Pioneer, but and she was she was a force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. That will bring up Carson Campus, the DP. She popped a short her first time up. Campus is a freshman. Fouled it off. If she hits a home run here, she'll be the big woman on campus. <laughs> Rim shot there. That's a liner to left. It'll drop for a hit. Flag down by Strasser. She'll throw it to second, but the runner's going to third, and she's safe. Throw to second. Wild throw. Doran is there to back up. Neil goes from first to third, and Campus with a single. That's the second on the throw. Dara Strasser threw the ball to second. Well, she didn't hit a home run, but uh, a little bit of help from the Zebras, and uh, now there's runners at second and third. Still no outs here in the top of the fourth. First pitch to Shannon, ground ball to third, and throw will be to first, and it's a wild throw. This is going to score one, and it'll score two. That's an E5. Two runs score off the throwing air. That'll bring up the leadoff, Baker. Manchester takes a 4-1 to one lead. Squires are being very aggressive on the bases, and it's really paying yeah. off for them. I think they're forcing Rochester's hand a little bit and making them make some mistakes. Baker swings at the first pitch. Ground ball. Hottishell steps on second for the force, but her throw to first is late. Only a force out. Fourth out of second. Runner safe at first for one away. Baker just too fast, and uh, especially up. swinging from the left side, and make her step faster. So a runner at first, one out. Molly Shanup is the batter. She is one for one with a walk and a single. She has an RBI. There goes the runner. Throw. Late. Stolen base for Peyton Baker. Baker with a stolen base. More aggressive base running. Way up and in. That, that dusted Molly Shannon. Usual, wear it. Yeah, really. Yeah, you stand up there. Yeah. It's always a better idea when it's not you that's at the uh, in the box. You're wearing a helmet. Take it, kid. <laughs> so we gonna miss. Ground ball sharply hit. Knocked down by Sells. This will be a tough play. Oh, she got her. What a play by Emma Sells. That's really good. Runs out to the second base for the second out. Runner advances to third. That'll bring up Howard. So Baker advances. Runner at third. Two outs. Avery Howard is the batter. Howard is 0 for 2. She struck out and flown out to center. Well, that was really nice by Emma Sells. 
ball. To knock it down, then to kind of keep your composure and make an accurate throw. Really good. Good pitch. Jammed her. Foul ball. One and one the count. 4-1 Manchester here in the top of the fourth. All in the dirt. We're going to give Hadley Shannon one RBI on that play. A run was going to score even if the throw was accurate. But the throw was inaccurate and two runs wound up scoring. Foul ball. Back over our heads. Two and two. Inside, I think that's a screwball. If it's inside the right hand batters, I think that's usually a screwball. Foul ball. Three, two. Base on balls. Howard walks to bring up the pitcher Evans. Mia Hadashell has walked four. She's hit a batter, and she has struck out one. Emma Evans is the batter. She has lined a third and walked. Ground ball. Knocked down by Coleman. Throw will be to first. Safe, and the run scores. RBI single for Evans. Call that an infield single and an RBI for Emma Evans. It's 5-1 to one now. And Avery Howard hustles from first all the way to third on that play. I think she was, I think she was on the move already. Yeah, she was and didn't slow down a bit. Courtesy runner number six, Evans. Two, credit, sorry, two, Sabo. Olivia Sabo is now the courtesy runner at first. Three runs in in the inning. And let's see if Sabo will be on the move. Let's see if Parson will take a pitch to allow Sabo to go to second. 5-1 here. Pitch is high. Throw down. Out. And she was tagged out before the run across the plate. Good throw by Callie Watson. Not before Manchester can get three in the top of the fourth. Headed to the That retires the side. Manchester. Manchester scores three runs, three hits, one error, and one left. At the end of three and a half innings, Manchester leads Rochester 5-1, to one, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Welcome back here to Fansler Field. After three and a half, the Squires have increased their lead to four runs and lead 5-1 over the Rochester Zebras. and They've been uh, very aggressive on the base paths. Here so far in this one, Val, and it's paid off. It's kind of forced Rochester's hand a couple times, and they've uh, they've made a few mistakes, and uh, you know, throwing the 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 wrong base one time and, mm -hmm. and a throwing error another time, and it's uh, paid off for the Squires. Leading off for Rochester in the bottom of the fourth, number three, the first stop, Hottishell. I mean, this this seems like a big inning coming up. I think you want to get. I don't know if you need to get the the lead back, but you need to get something. You get your three, four, five hitters due, and this is the second time through the order. Emma Hadashell hits well to left and deep over the left fielder's head. Should be extra bases with Emma running. She's got a double. Well, that's a good start. Hadashell with a double. That'll bring up third baseman, number one, Coleman. Well, Emma came in hitting 773, and the batting average is only going up because she's two for two. Kylie Coleman's the batter. She has grounded to third. Again, if 
I think Emma's just at that point where the ball has slowed down for her. Yeah. Hit by a pitch. Coleman's hit by the pitch. That'll bring up the, short, or the center fielder, number 23, Hollins. First and second with nobody out. The funny thing is that if, if that ball had not hit Emma, it would have been a wild pitch, or that ball had not but hit Kylie, it would have been a wild pitch, and Emma would be on third. But I think Rochester doesn't mind that outcome because now you got two on base. And Sidney Hawes is the batter. Sid, a 652 hitter. Rochester's hit three home runs as a team, and she has hit two of them. Mm-hmm. In fact, she hit two in one game against Triton. So far, you have to like Manchester's infield defensively with Barrett at third, Baker at short, and Howard at second. Pretty good. Strike one, kind of a half swing there by Sid. Sid says she doesn't like being pitched outside, so sometimes she'll take an extra step closer to home plate. Try to cut down that outside corner a little bit. Lollipop high. One and one. Haw singled back in the second inning. A heater there by Evans. Fouled off. One and two. After th throwing her two off-speed pitches, she threw her a fastball there. He's, he's down by four. Rip foul. Evans tried another fastball there, and Sid was ready for it. Yanked it foul. Evans checks her wristband, then looks again at the dugout. Now nope, gets ready to pitch. Ball high. Two and two. Rip to left, that's a base hit. Rounding third is hot as shell. She will score. Runner's going to try to go for third. Safe. That's a wild throw. And here comes Coleman, and she will also score, and Hawes winds up at third. Single. Hawes with a single of emphasis to third. RBI. Throw. RBI for Hawes. Coleman also scores two across. Mm -hmm. And that'll break up the pitcher. How to show. Coleman to second on the single, to third on the throw. She scores on an E1. That's an error on the pitcher who threw the ball wildly. Haas to, from first to second on the throw and from second to third on the E1. Five to three now. Runner at third, nobody out. First pitch high and outside to Mia Hadeshell. She is zero for zero. Lay down a sacrifice bunt her first time out. Now, it was not a good throw by the left fielder. She doesn't get the error, but it was not a good throw either. She missed the cut. I mean, they had no chance at Emma. That had to go to the cutoff and keep Hawes at first base, and it didn't do that. And now she's on third. Ground ball to short. Throw is in time, but Hawes scores, and it's 5-4 to four now. RBI for Hadeshell gets thrown out of first. One away. That'll bring up the right fielder, Dorn. Well, good start here in the bottom of the fourth for the Zebras. They get three of those runs back and yeah. are within one. Well, they said they needed something. They've gotten three. Yeah. They've got to feel better now. Doran. That's not just something. That's a lot. Yeah, strike over the inside corner. Doran had an RBI ground up to short back in the second inning. Five ball.
One out, right, Val? One out. Yeah. That's what I had. I just want to make sure I didn't miss some. Ball outside. One and two. Little pop foul. Oh, nice catch. Espeset. Keith Dorn pops up for the second out. McKelvey Espeset has made some nice plays defensively at first base for Manchester in this game. She got low and got her glove underneath and caught that one. Haley Durkis is the batter. Durkis grounded to the pitcher her first time. Strike. Five four Manchester, bottom of the fourth. Comebacker. Evans to first for the out, and that retires the side. Rochester scores three runs. Two hits, one error, nobody left. At the end of four innings, Manchester leads Rochester 5-4, to four, and you're watching RTC. All right, four. back here at Fansler, and Val, you said the uh, Zebras really needed to get a little bit something back there in the bottom of the fourth, and they get three runs. So back to within one here as we move into the top of the fifth, and the Zebras kind of a uh, little bit of uh, this for that with, with Manchester there. They, they gave them a little bit of their own... Uh, base running medicine, if you will. Mm -hmm. Carson leading off the fifth inning for Manchester. Very aggressive in the uh, on the bases, and it kind of uh, forced the Manchester's hand a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, top five. Still got a lot of softball to be played here. Parson, Barrett, and Neal do for the Lady Squires. Anything from uh, Bob Copeland yet? I haven't heard anything. Yeah. Ball low, one and one. Parson falls that one off. Nice pitch by me to get in on the hands there of Parson. That was couldn't extend her arms and fouled it off. Didn't have a whole lot of steam on that swing. Hi. You know, it was interesting. We saw Macy Brown pitch here a couple of years ago, and Macy was not at all a really accomplished pitcher, but she can nick that outside corner at the knees blindfolded. Mm-hmm. But that can only work unless you can hit, throw inside, too. Fly ball to center, circling it, and then catching it is Hawes. Nice play. One Team up, one down. For Parsons, caught by center fielder, one away. Same thing with Laney Smith. That'll bring up Barrett. You know, back in that 2012 team that made semi-state, did Laney have the greatest speed? No, but she could hit that outside corner at the knees all day long, but, and then she'd throw inside enough just to keep you honest. That was kind of the, I think that was kind of the Carla Holland way of teaching pitching, but it worked. Yeah. Barrett is 0 for 2, popped to short, popped to second, popped to short. First pitch is high. Well, you see it a lot, Val. I mean, mm -hmm. high school pitchers, they, they want to throw six different pitches. Yeah. And sometimes they get to the point where they're not throwing any of the pitches well. Right. And if yeah. you just throw two or three pitches well, you're better off, yeah, really. Yeah, keep it simple, yeah. Mm -hmm. Foul ball. I mean, the Caston pitchers, they're different, but they're, they've they been pitching forever. When right. You're talking about Kinsey and, Ad, and, and Addison. Right. One and one. And even a pitcher like Josie Wood, who had all the pit, you know, she had all the pitches in the bag, but, man, with that – with her heat and her curveball, that's really all you needed. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
One and two, the count to Barrett. Barrett popped up with the bases loaded two innings ago, and that, might have, that was a pretty big out. Grounder. Sells next down, keeps it front. Flips to Heinzman. Two up, two Grounder, down. Ground out to the second baseman for the second out. That'll bring up the batter, Neal. And I don't know if I'm saying it's a bad thing to have the ability to have a bunch of pitches, but I guess what I was trying to say was don't force the issue until you're ready. Yeah. Olivia Neal has grounded to short. Last time up, she singled to lead off the inning and wound up scoring. So one for two with the run score. Olivia Neal, a junior and a right fielder. Grounder, that was a nice pitch too. Kept it outside corner at the knees like we were talking about. Sells throws to Heinzman for the out, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of four and a half innings, Manchester leads Rochester 5-4, to four, and you're watching RTC TV4. Back here at Fanzler Field, moving into the bottom of the fifth, and it was a really good fourth inning for the Zebras. They got... Uh, uh, well, the fourth and then the top of the fifth, they they got three runs back in the bottom of the fourth, and then they did a really nice job, Mia, really finding her groove and, and getting three ground outs to uh, get Manchester out one, two, three there in the right. in the uh, top of the fifth. Right, and, and Mia kind of finding a rhythm, getting a, you know pitching to contact and getting outs early in the in the count. I mean, Mia has gone five innings in this game, and it. Even just a couple of weeks ago, it was you know it was she. Could, it seemed like she would get tired around the third inning. So, yeah, or, yeah. Or, or third inning will work. Strasser puts the first pitch into play. Ground ball to second, and Howard oh, throws to first for the out. Second baseman, one away. That'll bring up the leadoff batter, Sells. Strasser is now 0 for two, and that'll bring up Emma Sells. Emma Sells is 0 for two. She is grounded to short and popped to third. Again, for Dara Strasser to have a coach like Becky Lee, that is going to be great for her. That ball is put in play by Sells. Evans Sells to Espeset for the out. <laughs> Another two-pitch, two two-out uh, start to an inning. This time it was Manchester. That will bring up Callie Watson. Callie has grounded to third, and she popped to first her last time with Espeset making a terrific catch. And Callie came in hitting 423. Pitches inside. And Lady Z's will host Warsaw here at 11 a.m. on Saturday. Their next conference game is against Wabash on Monday here. Strike. This is, at least from a conference standpoint, this is game three of a five-game homestand. Matt Wabash at home on Monday, and they got McConaughey at home next Wednesday. Low. One and one. North Miami is 4 0. They're the only undefeated team left, and the Lady Z's finish off TRC play with a trip to North Miami two weeks from today. So could the Lady Z's wind up having to play spoiler there? Fly ball to right center field. That might drop. It will. Kelly takes a big turn. She'll Watson hold there. You've said that especially about Kelly. When she's hitting well, she's hitting the ball to right field. Mm -hmm. That one split the outfielders. So. Emma Hottishell's the batter. Emma's two for two with a single and a double. She scored. She doubled and scored last inning. Hit her. Hottishell is hit by the pitch. That'll bring up to the third baseman, number one, Coleman. First and second with two outs, and that'll bring up Kylie Coleman. Kylie is grounded to third, and she has been hit by a pitch. 0 for 1 with a run scored. The potential tying and go-ahead runs now are on base here in the bottom of the fifth. Lady Z's trail by one. Third time through the order. Let's see. Rip to right center field. It'll draw for a base hit. And it's going to go all the way to the wall. 
One run is going to score. Here comes Emma. The throw is going to be close. No, safe. Wild throw to the backstop. Coleman going to try for third. Safe. The ball's dropped. And she'll stop there. Two RBI double for Coleman. Two run double for Kylie Coleman. Well, that's a great job there. It looked like it was going to be a quick inning, Val, for the Rochester Zebras. They had two outs with two pitches and, and were able to get a couple on, and, and now they've got a couple over, and they have the lead. Yep. And that'll be another error to allow the runner to go to third. Hawes will receive an intentional walk. Intentional walk to Hawes. Runners on the corner now for the Zebras. First and third. That'll bring up Hottishell. First and third with two outs, and that'll bring up Mia Hottishell. Now do you have Mia take a pitch to allow Sid to take second base? There's a conversation in the, in the circle, but Manchester's coach, Coach Volk, is not there. That's just the, the battery in the infield. Meanwhile, Becky Lee is talking with, Sid, with Mia Hadeshell. Again, that opposite field approach. Watson's hit was to the opposite field. Then Hadeshell was hit by a pitch. Then Coleman ripped one to right center field. I don't get that. They had a long conversation in the circle. Now she's looking at her wristband again and then looking at the dugout. Swinging at the first pitch is Mia Hadeshell. Baker. Nope, Howard calls her off and makes the catch. Mia Hadeshell pops to second to retire the side. Rochester gets two runs on two hits in the bottom of the fifth. There was one error and two left. At the end of five innings, Rochester leads Manchester 6-5, to five, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Welcome back here to Fansler Field. The Rochester Zebras have scored five runs in the last two innings. They got three in the bottom of the fourth, two more in the bottom of the fifth, and after five, Rochester in front, 6-5 over the Manchester Squires, and bats have come to life here for the Zebras' last two innings, Val. Yeah, and I think it's adjustments in the approach and they were hitting the ball on the ground a lot early in the game and now they're starting to hit the ball in the air and that's usually a good sign and like you said uh, you know they're they're hitting it into the spots where they need to they're hitting in the opposite field yeah. finding those gaps in the manchester defense and giving the opportunity for extra bases ground ball base hit right center field campus with a single so Carson Campus, the freshman DP, leads off the top of the six with a base hit. That'll bring up the center fielder. That'll bring up their number nine hitter, Hadley Shanup, the center fielder. So let's see, your runner at first, nobody out. You're down by one, and your number nine hitter is up. I think a bunt would be likely here, but let's see what happens. High and outside. Again, this game isn't over. No, far from it. Yeah. Popped up, foul out of play. Softball update. Typical New Valley leads Whitco 3 to nothing. top of the second. Line one to right. That will draw for a base hit, and that's going to roll deep. That's trouble. Doran flags it down. She hits Sells. She hits Emma Hodeshell. Stopping at third is Campus. With a double. Second and third. third with nobody out. So they don't bunt with the number nine hitter, and she gets a double. And now it's second and third, nobody out, and I think that's going to be it for Mia. Now pitching for the Zebras, number seven, Sells. Well, you got your probably most experienced pitcher coming in in relief here, Emma Sells, and mm -hmm. you know it's it's a tough situation coming in with no outs, two two on, and your your leadoff hitter is up for the Squires. Yeah, we'll see what uh, Emma can do here. So while she gets warmed up here, let's go ahead and take a quick break, and we'll be back here in just a moment. You're watching RTC TV4. 
All right, welcome back here. Emma Sells is going to take over in the circle for the Zebra. She inherits two runners on, nobody out here in the top of the sixth. First pitch to Baker is low and outside, knocked down by Watson. Peyton Baker has flown out to center, doubled, and then last time she grounded into a force out. So she's one for three. She has one RBI and two runs scored in this game. Strike. She's lefty and just watching her, she's got good speed. I think if you're the Lady Z's, you, do you trade a run for not here? I think you do, especially if she hits it to second base or shortstop. And that is Haley Dirk is now playing second. So Durkis moves from DP to second base, sells from second base to pitcher, and Mia Hadeshell's out of the game. Low and outside, ball three. Molly Shan up on deck. 6-5 Rochester, top of the sixth. Base on balls, and the ball gets away. And she'll score, and the throw hits the runner. And so Baker is going to be able to go to second. Baker walks. Also stolen base on the wild pitch, scores a run. So a walk, a wild pitch, and an E2. It allows Baker to go from first to second. So second and third, nobody out, and Molly Shanup is the batter. We are tied at six now. Shanup is one for two. Grounded to second her last time up with Emma Sells making a great play to Robert. First pitch is put in play. Coleman fakes, whirls, runs her back. Got her. What a play by Kylie Coleman. Oh, wow. Sensational. Fielder's choice. Fielder's choice, five unassisted. Five put out at third base on shutup. One out. Runners at first and second with one out for Avery Howard. <laughs> that is a play that you make. If you, you, have to, you have to have played a lot of softball in your life to know that. <laughs> that was sweet. I watched... Just did the replay on that. That was a nice play. Mm -hmm. First pitch is a swing and a miss to Howard. You know, Kylie said she hadn't played any, hardly any third base prior to this year. She said, kind of took an adjustment to how quickly the ball comes at you. I think she's made the adjustment. I mean, that yeah. was, whoa, way high. There goes the runner. Throw. Got her. Safe. Oh. Double geez. steal. Looked like she was Double getting uh, getting there just right under the good. tag. The way Peyton Baker's speed has been a factor in this game. Floater to left. It'll drop for a base hit. Manchester takes the lead. And Strasser's throw is high. It's backed up. The throw back to third. Out. Howard advances to second on the throw. Howard goes to second on the throw. Two away. To bring up Evans. 7-6 Manchester. 7-2-5 is the put out. Well, the Squires just continue to be a very aggressive on the bases. Mm -hmm. Line drive to right. Fair ball. Base hit. And that will score another run. RBI single for Emma Evans. It's 8-6. That was just barely fair. And with Howard running on contact with two outs, she scored easily. 8-6 Manchester. I'll bring up Parson. Will there be a courtesy runner? There will be. Thank you. That's butts because she had eight down here. So, courtesy runner number ten. I lost the wrong number down here. We're going to do some research to find you. I guess it's butts. Pitches in the dirt. Butts still second. Runner sweatshirt it says butts. Yeah. Okay. That is butts. Who's the courtesy runner?
Runner to second. Durkis' throw to first is in time, and that retires the side. So Parson is now 0 for 3. And Manchester scores 3. On four hits. One error, one left. At the end of five and a half innings, Manchester leads Rochester 8-6, to six, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Welcome back here to Fansler Field, and... Manchester regains the lead in the top of the sixth, eight to six. And so the Zebras coming into the bottom here, Val, they got to get going again. They're, they're back down by two runs. It will be Doran, Durkis, and Strasser due for Rochester in the bottom of the sixth. That was Kelsey Butts who was in as a courtesy. Runner in that. In the of the sixth, Grounder, back to Evans. Doran is the first out here in the sixth. Gotta bring up Dirkus. Dirkus is 0 for 2. She's grounded to the pitcher both times. Chokes up on the bat. And grounds one foul. Foul tip held on to by Parson. 0 and 2. Grounder foul. Play and that is going to drop for a base hit for Haley Durkis. Durkis with a single. Just the second hit of her varsity career. She was one for nine coming into that at bat. Nice piece of hitting by the freshman, getting the zebras on with one out. Now Dara Strasser will bat. She shows bunt. She lays one down. She fouls it off. 0-1-1. Manchester beat Rochester 6-2 last year over at Manchester. Bunt, foul ball. Chad Myers got a close look at that, and it it kind of <laughs> kind of slept and took a nap there just to the left of the foul line. So 0-2, let's see if you, know, you would not imagine Trusser would be bunting now. Pitch is up. Durkis is not running. Strasser's 0 for 2, grounded back to the pitcher on a bunt attempt and grounded to second. Got her swinging. Strasser goes down and swing. Two away now for Rochester. Brings up the layoff batter, Sells. Strikeout number one for Evans. That one was had some nice movement at the end. Runner at first, two outs. Emma Sells is the batter.
ball. Lou. You know, the heart of your batting order will have one more chance at least. High ball. Let's see if Sells can keep it alive and hope that the heart of your batting order can bat this inning. Strike. I mentioned Valley leading Whitco 3 to nothing. Remember, whoever wins that Rochester Valley game in the sectional plays Whitco. Whitco got the bye. Yeah. Ground ball. Back to Evans, and she throws to Espeset for the out, and that retires the side. No runs, no runs, one hit, Here no errors, one left. End, end of six. six Manchester. Manchester leads Rochester 8-6, to six, and you're watching RTC TV4. Back here at Fansler, moving into the seventh after six. It is Manchester 8, Rochester 6. It's been a back-and-forth game here all night long, Val, with the uh, Zebras and the Squires right now. It's uh, Manchester with a two-run lead. Yeah, that was a big strikeout, I think, of Strasser, because uh, that's you know where you would hope she would at least advance the runner at the very least, and not able to do that because I think that would have made Sells's at bat a little bit different if she had been up with the runner at second. Right. Like you said, if uh, they can get out clean here in the top of the seventh, they have you know two, three, four coming up, so an opportunity there to. Possibly get a walk off. Yep. First pitch by Sells to Lauren Barrett is low for a ball. Barrett is 0 for 3. She'll be followed by Olivia Neal and Carson Campus. Of course, first things first, they got to get out of the top of the seventh here. Mm -hmm. High a ball. This game's certainly been entertaining. The ball's been put ball's been put in play a lot. Mm -hmm. Just high. Three and zero. Oh. Sells with eleven walks and ten and two thirds innings. Coming into this game, Rochester is a team with 53 walks and 41 innings. So if you walk more than one an inning, that's a problem. Lead off walk for Lauren Barrett. Barrett walks. That'll bring up Neal. That will bring up Olivia Neal. See if she is up there to bunt. Swings and misses in a pitch of the dirt. That was strange. Oh and one. Inside for ball. Let it hit you. That's what a fan immediately yells. <laughs> one and one. Up the middle. Base hit. That's why she didn't let it hit her. Neal with a line drive up the middle. First and second, nobody out. And Carson Campus will step up. So Neal, there's seven hitters, two for four. Campus, there are eight hitters, two for three. And Shanna. They're nine hitters, one for two. So they've gotten production from the bottom of their lineup, and we talk about it all the time. When you're seven, eight, nine hits, that's when you score a lot of runs. I think Coach Volk is going to put in a pinch runner, not a courtesy runner. This is a pinch runner, but she can still re-enter.
Well, I think there should be a standing policy that uh, anybody that says let it hit you lines up at the uh, at home plate in between innings and, and we let it hit them. <laughs> see, if they, see if they keep yelling that. I'm thinking of the movie Dodgeball. Yeah. Was that the scene with Rip Torn, was that the name of the actor? Uh-huh. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Yeah. First pitch to Carson Campus is high. So let's see. Again, you don't normally see the eight hitter bunt to get to the nine hitter. That would be something possible again. Little pop up. It did not no infield fly rule. Campus. Pops up for the first out. Ball's caught by Emma Hanna shelf for the out. The runners hold. I don't think that was hit high enough in the air for it to be infield fly. Right. I'll bring up Hadley Shannon. Shannon has been hit by a pitch. She reached on an air and she doubled. Fly ball to right. Can Doran get there? Yep. Keaton Doran with the catch in right field. Tagging up and advancing is Barrett. Barrett advances to third. Well, this is a uh, crucial at bat for both teams right here. Yeah. So first and third, two outs. Peyton Baker is up for the fifth time. She's flown to center, doubled, grounded into a force out, and walked, and she scored three runs. Pitch is in the dirt, and taking second is the courtesy runner. That is Savannah Evans. It's now on second. So the force out's out of the equation. Pitch is high. Watson fakes a throw over to third. Count is 2-0 and oh on Baker. Molly Shannon on deck. Grounder right side. Durkis, tough play. Safe. And a run scores to make it 9-6. to six. On the play, Evans, Savannah Evans advances to third. On the corner again, two outs. Brings Scoring that as an infield hit. That's what we're doing, yep. Just great speed. Stealing second is Baker. Baker steals second. Second and third with two outs. And Callie would sometimes consider throwing down the second in that situation, but not with Baker. Put that one in your back pocket. Pitches in the dirt. 2-0 the count to Molly Shannon. She has walked. Singled. Grounded to second. And grounded to fielder's choice. Fly ball to left. Can Strasser get there? Yep. And that retires the side. Line out to left field. For the third out. Headed to the bottom of the seventh. Manchester seven. scores one Spires run. Lead, Two hits. No errors and two left at the end of six and a half. Manchester leads Rochester nine to six, and you're watching RTC TV four. Welcome back here to Fansler, moving into bottom of the seventh, and the Squires added a little insurance run there in the top. Val lead nine six, so Rochester's got to get three here, or we're done. But these are the hitters you want up with Watson, Emma Hadashell, and Coleman. And if anybody gets on Hawes. Softball update, Tippecanoe Valley leads Whitco 7-4, top of the third. Valley's 3-1, Whitco is 0-4. It's a, a young Whitco team, talented, but struggling a little bit and just haven't had any luck in close games. Yeah. They sound like they've been getting 10 run ruled all day. They, they've just struggled in close games. They were one out away from beating the Lady Z's and lost, and I think haven't really recovered from that one. Strike called to Watson. Callie. Has grounded to third, popped to first, and singled. One for three. She has scored a run. Popped up. Foul is a playable. Parson makes the catch. Watson pops up in foul territory for the first out. That'll bring up the shortstop. The Squires down uh, two outs away from a win here. Zebra's got to keep it going, stay alive. 
Emma Hadeschel is two for two. She was hit by a pitch and scored her last time up. Liner underneath the glove of Howard. Hadeschel with a single. We will call that a base hit. Boy, her numbers just keep going up. Yeah. And she's three for three, right? Yeah. She. What do they call that? A seafood diet? <laughs> she. Or, no, 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 no. They don't call that a seafood. They, they say she has a weight problem. She can't wait to hit. Oh, I say I'm on the seafood diet. That's yeah. A, yeah, yeah. We're on the seafood. Yeah. I see food and I eat it. Yeah. Yeah. And she has a she has a weight problem. She can't wait to hit. Yeah. And if I were that hot, I wouldn't couldn't wait to hit either. Coleman is the batter. She is one for two. She's reached base twice. She was hit by a pitch in the fourth and had a two-run double back in the fifth. Coach Volk is having a meeting in the circle here. I don't know how much is about defensive positioning, how much is pitch selection, how much is just tell a joke and make the kids laugh and try to relieve the tension. Mm -hmm. And how much of that is if Emma Hadeschel takes off, do you just let her steal? Strike. No. The thing is, I can't. You know, if Emma might try to steal here, but again, her run doesn't mean a whole lot because Rochester's down by three. All right. So Emma can't be as aggressive as maybe she'd like. Ball. One and one. Yeah, right now they they need runners on the bases. Popped up. Foul. Out of play. One and two. Well that play Kylie made defensively on that fielder's choice. That was that was the best defensive play we've seen about all year. But ladies, he's with a couple of errors today, too. This is Looper liner to right. Caught. Wow, that was a great play out there making that catch. Right field for the second out. Olivia Neal came in on it, almost came in too far, but reached up and snagged it. Yeah. Runner at first. Hot. Climbed the ladder and able to make that uh, catch. Runner at first, two outs. Well, Squires one out away from a victory here. Hawes is up. How does Shell, who was taken out, I guess she's technically the DP now, so she's on deck. Hoping for a chance. That's a wild pitch. Emma takes a big turn. We'll stay at second. Goes to second on the wild pitch. Again, maybe if Lady Z were down by one, maybe Emma would get aggressive and try for third there. But yeah. down, down by three, just not worth the, not worth the risk. Again, I am just amazed how well Emma's running. She had ACL surgery six months ago. Ground ball to third. This should do it. Barris throw to first is in time. And the Manchester Lady Squires have won their third straight game. Final of the night, Squires 9, Zebras 6. One of which the Squires best luck in the remainder of their season. Zebras are back home. For Rochester in the bottom of the seventh, no runs, one hit, no errors, one left. Manchester defeats Rochester 9-6. to Watching RTC TV 4.